Hey there, it's Greg again. I recently had another question about um, OPC UA with ThingWorks over Azure IoT. Um, and the question came up of how can I monitor and set up some alerts in ThingWorks to be notified and to monitor the status of the accessibility of my Kipware or other OPC UA server. So I've created some little helper things to do this, um, but let's start by having a look at how we do this today in Kepware. The Kepware connection, always on connection, does expose essentially the system tags from, uh, from the OPC UA server. And we can see here that there's this folder that's system tags. And we've got a number of very useful system tags in here that uh, that include, you know, the file that's loaded, the version that's running, uh, the current time, and total number of tags as well as active tags. So uh, there's some other things in here that are quite interesting about specific uh, statistics on the particular channels, as well as for the interfaces. But for our purposes today, we're really just going to look at the overall um, system. And so I do have this connected to ThingWorks, and if I just come over to ThingWorks here, normally how this shows up uh, when we're using an always-on connection is like this, is an industrial gateway. We see that we've got this base thing te template industrial gateway, and I get a number of properties set up um, using the industrial gateway base type, and I can see here that essentially all those values that I was just looking at in OPC Quick Client, I have them here and they're coming in. So this is a really handy way to uh, to determine how many um, tags that you have active set up in your OPC servers remotely. And you can even do some fun stuff like uh, check the remote time using the, um, uh, there's one called daytime uh, local, I believe. And, um, and this is essentially what we're going to use because normally when we look at the um, at these other industrial gateways here, these are industrial gateway, uh, industrial connections that are created using the Azure IoT Hub Connector uh, and the Azure Industrial IoT OPC UA interface. And you can see here that this is also using the industrial gateway base thing type. Uh, and, um, and I've got all these tags that are here as part of the industrial gateway. And what's a little bit unfortunate is is they're not bound because it's not the same mechanism that uh, it's not the same connection that's used. So what we're going to do is we're going to essentially try and replicate a little bit of the the functionality. Uh, one other thing to, worth noting is is if I come back over here to my to my um, Kepware instance and I just shut down the um, the always on interface, I'm going to come back here right away and I have this disconnection notification in ThingWorks. And the reason for this is because the whole protocol for always on is constantly keeping a tunnel open. And this consumes a lot of, of resources on the server when we have a very large amount of connected devices. Um, and we don't have that concept with Azure IoT. We don't have open channels that are constantly connected. So even if I were to disconnect my, um, my system, I would still see this connected status here. And the reason is because that's connected to the IoT hub. So um, we do understand that this doesn't mean that I'm necessarily connected to uh, OPC UA server, but I want to get some relevant data from there. So what I've done is I've set up this um, this thing template uh, called Azure IoT Kepware Monitor. And basically all this this does is, is it's got a remote thing base type and it's got the industrial thing shape. So it's essentially just going to work like a normal thing that we are connecting to Azure Industrial IoT uh, with ThingWorks. Um, and if we look at the properties and alerts, you can see that I created a number of, of those properties from the Kepware OPC UA server, things that I want to see up here in ThingWorks about my uh, industrial gateway, active tag count, client count, um, local time, seconds, and total tag count. Um, so I've created those and I've got a couple of other ones here, received elapsed time and received last change that I've 
used to calculate essentially when the last change has come in on this this heartbeat value. And, um, and then I've got some subscriptions that I've set up that essentially set the um, set the time the last time the uh, the thing was started and when uh, there's a data change event that comes in on the heartbeat. So all this is going to do is each time that any value is received on the heartbeat, it's going to update the received last change time with the current time from the event. So we should see this this changing. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a thing shape. Perhaps it could be changed into a, a thing. Uh, sorry, it's a thing template. It could be changed into a thing shape. Uh, but let's go ahead and um, essentially create a thing that will be a monitor for our um, industrial gateway. Uh, let's just call it industrial gateway monitor. Actually, you know what? We'll we'll call it. Um, monitor thing monitor there we go okay so we know what it is it's for monitoring we can even leave it in there I don't have a value stream associated I'm not saving anything from here just because we want to keep the system as performant as possible when I save that we see everything comes in here industrial thing I have to set the industrial thing to point it to the particular industrial gateway that I'm referring to and this is this UAT DD8801 endpoint that is connecting over Azure Industrial IoT. Um, and when I save that, I get that my monitor thing is now connected. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to map some of the, uh, make the mappings. So when I come in here, similar to how I would browse tags using the Kepware Always On interface, I'm just using these uh, browse services provided by the Azure Industrial IoT application. And I'm looking for this system underscore system um, folder here. And basically, I want the active tag count. And I'm going to bind all of these client count, active tag count. There's a bunch of them in here. I don't want them all. I don't want to bog down the connection. And I don't want to have too many messages coming in. I really want to, to go with something that is um, fit for the purpose of what we're trying to accomplish here. I also did notice that it's not necessarily so relevant, a lot of these values, to have running and, and sending tag updates always. Um, OK, so there's our second. So we're just going to use the seconds as a heartbeat, because that's going to change on a, on a per second interval. And it's a simple number. number. Total tag count. OK, so we've got our five bindings that are set up there. Let's save the thing. Um, and by default, everything is going to be coming in on a one second interval. Probably don't need that for the active tag count and the client count, total tag count. We could probably go in and change those. Um, but for the purpose of this demonstration, we'll just leave them as they are. And so immediately we see that data is coming in. We're getting this. Um, local time here as well as the the heartbeat value and if I come down here a little bit further I've actually organized these based on the category so we can have a look at the the category connection status and um, and just see that you know there's a few connection status properties and these are this is the last change that's received here and this received elapsed time is the time since the last update was received. So uh, I can slow this down a little bit. If, for example, I come in here to the heartbeat and we change this to five second interval, basically we should only get that heartbeat value every five seconds. And you'll see that this received elapsed timer starts to increase. Um, and then it will reset essentially. And it's just really, this is implemented using a timer. So there's a timer over here that runs and evaluates every one second. And, uh, and it's running this, um, um, service somewhere in here. There it is. Evaluated reporting status service. And this service is really just going through the, um, 
the monitor thing template. So as, as many servers as I have that are, are of this particular thing template type, uh, I can be monitoring a large number of OPC UA servers. It's going to come in here, grab the list of them. It's going to loop through them. It's going to look at the last received time, and it's going to set the elapsed time to the difference of the two. So this then allows me to to have some alerts set up. Um, if I come back over to the uh, the properties, you know, I've just created a few here and I put some ranges. So as that value is going to count up, uh, we can have different alert ranges with different severities for the alarms, so that uh, so that they can you know essentially trigger some form of different action, uh, so that you know we can notify someone not only if we wanted to, we can obviously store uh, some form of value if we wanted to historize log something. I don't really want to log this, but I certainly want to notify somebody if there is an issue with the um, the connection. So that's a, about uh, about all that I wanted to to share. This is a pretty simple implementation using a, a heartbeat concept, um, and and I think there's a lot more that this type of approach could could do if we wanted to trend this over time, if we wanted to count outages, if we wanted to do some timing of how long these outages potentially occurred. Uh, it could be very good practice considering. You know, if we look at this concept now, we're starting to do OPC UA over over the internet, and and likely having a large number of OPC UA servers. Um, and then, so just one comment about uh, the is connected uh, and is reporting. It's it's always been quite easy, frankly, with uh, always on to just leverage the is connected to determine if we have an, uh, a connection status with the device that we're talking with. And, and this is because of that always on connected tunnel. And, and as I mentioned earlier, we don't have that liberty with, uh, you know, publish subscribe type protocols or something like HTTP that might just be pushing or even polling. So this is why we, inv we created this is reporting. This is called thing presence. You can look it up more in the, uh, the help, which is quite interesting. And the thing presence essentially is going to look at the connection status and when that connection status was last, uh, evaluated and is going to essentially update the is reporting and this is actually built in to the thing model so you'll find over here on the configuration there's this reporting configuration and this is what this is all about is the thing presence and by default always on reporting is actually going to do that reporting is reporting is determined based on the bind and unbind of when a device is connecting and this is why it says that it is reporting despite the fact that it's not is because um, with publish subscribe approaches there's no data coming in uh, in a constant flow and there's no bind um, there's no there's no devices bound here so um, where did that get to configuration so we can change this we can actually implement our own custom um, custom reporting strategy and this is done by just creating a new thing of type uh, reporting strategy and uh, having a search on the uh, on the help for the uh, the thing presence and basically I, you can implement what a, whatever form of reporting strategy that you wanted uh, one way to do that would actually be to go in through the things on a period like I've done with a timer and check all of the properties on implemented things that have remotely bound properties and see what the last time that they've been updated. Uh, and this is a way that that obviously can look at not only the connection status to the devices that are sending data, but also uh, when we got data from them the last time. And that's quite interesting because if we think about an OPC UA server, for example, we could clearly be connected to the OPC UA server, but not receiving data from a PLC. So such, a, such an implementation using this thing presence can, can really go above and beyond and look at uh, the intervals and the quality and the integrity of the data flowing up from uh, our data sources. Hope you find this useful. Take care.